Hi everyone, thank you so much for attending this talk and thank you to Figma for having us. I'm Jo. And I'm Jess. And we are really excited to be here. Besides being best friends and roommates for the past seven years, we are also the co-founders of Ditto, a tool for teams to collaborate on their copy from ideation to design to development. Over the course of building Ditto, which actually started out as a Figma plugin, we've been super lucky to work directly with hundreds of incredible teams and see how they manage text and how text fits into their design processes. During this talk, we are hoping to pass along some of those insights we've learned with you all through the lens of our journey building Ditto. We're gonna share this through four parts. First, we'll talk through the role of text in building product. Next, we'll share how and why we think text should be thought of as a system. Then we'll get into our journey of building Ditto and what we've learned. And lastly, we're gonna wrap up with how all the above has informed how we think design is going to change in the next decade. So now I'm gonna pass things off to Jess to get us started. Awesome, thanks. Text or copy exists on the surfaces of all of the digital products we use in design whether it's CTAs or instruction messages or labels or error messages, the text in designs shape how we use a product. However, because the text exists as a part of so many different places, whether it's the mock-ups or in development, we often forget to think about the role of text in product development. So the first question we wanted to dive into today is, what is the role of text in building product? As designers, our job is to close the gap between what users expect from your product and what it actually does. Product teams try to close this gap every day, whether by user testing, tracking metrics and behavior, or seeking feedback. In attempts to bridge this user experience communication gap, teams often forget the most important thing, the text. In reality, copy is a product's most direct line of communication to users text makes expected user behavior explicit and is your chance to communicate intent. In being what your users actually read, the text anchors the user experience and bridges gaps in expectation. It's what guides users when they venture off the happy path and serves as your product's guardrails. Whether it's an error message, a new user experience, or an empty state, it's often text that guides users when they don't know what to expect. In a study conducted by Microsoft Azure's design team, user test errors decreased by 44% after copy changes alone. It's in moments of mismatched expectations that clarity is most critical. This is especially true as the role of software expands. From health tech to financial products to security and authentication, the sole responsibility of guiding people through complex and important decisions is now carried by the digital experience. When discussing the role of text in building product, it's important to think about all of the roles that contribute to the text, design included. Collaborating on copy is inherently cross-functional. Just as product designers work on copy in mock-ups, the words might also be written by a content designer, localized by translators, reviewed by compliance and legal, edited by product managers, and implemented by engineering. If we take a step back, Almost every single step of the product development process exists in verticals. Designers work in design tools and then pass designs off to developers that work to, in dev tools. The same verticalization of tooling and work applies to almost every other step of building a software product with a team. But the key word here is almost. The exception to this verticalization of product development is the copy, which exists from the very beginning in specs and drafts all the way to the very end in the final product and is touched by everyone from design to engineering to legal to marketing. Throughout our journey building Ditto, we've talked with hundreds of teams about their copy workflows and we've seen how tricky it is to establish a process that both reflects the very integral role of text and design and also takes into account how cross-functional it is. For lots of teams, copy exists in lots of different places whether that's the mock-ups, external spreadsheets or docs, Slack messages, Jira tickets, or sometimes just in the code itself. For lots of teams, the same questions exist every time a new project is started. Is this copy on the mocks the final version? Who wrote this? 
When did this get changed? Did legal review this yet? And so on. Between screenshots being messaged back and forth in Slack and copy tables in Word docs, copy can end up detached from its goal of designing for users. Now that we've taken a look at the role of text in building product and all that it entails, the second topic that we wanted to cover today was how we can actually start thinking about text as a system. For those of you that work heavily in design systems, this might be redundant, but let's take a step back. What is a system? Well, for starters, Merriam-Webster defines a system as a regularly interacting or interdependent group of items forming a unified whole. Well, then what would be the purpose of a system? For one, systems make the relationships between individual items in a group explicit. Codifying implicit connections provides the space to be intentional and consistent about how things are treat how things are related. Second, systems help identify outliers. As things grow and scale, things don't always fit into existing patterns. Systems help to identify outliers in your existing structure and how to grow your system to fit new constraints. And lastly, improving something in a system improves the entire system. Rather than one-off changes that exist in isolation, making changes to a system improves it as a whole. Almost every aspect of building product today exists in and is thought of as a system. When we look at how we work, whether as designers or engineers, we see so many examples of how we can't build without systemization. Just a small handful of examples include design systems, UI patterns, React components, variables, constants, inheritance, and engineering. We could go on. So shouldn't we also think of text as a system? When we think about text without an understanding of its reuse and context, improving it is like redetermining the font, size, color every single time a designer creates a new button. So much of text, and specifically product copy, is written ad hoc. So why should that change? If we compare the two, many of the driving factors to systemizing design are also present when we think about systemizing text. First, communication is context driven. What does the end user already know? What do they expect? In design and engineering, these contexts are commonly codified as states, error states, progress states, etc. The mapping of these states to what a user sees and reads provides consistency in a user experience. Text is inherently reused and interconnected. Over time, users build familiarity around a glossary of terms unique to your product. I mean, what is an Airbnb experience or a Slack channel or Figma auto layout but an understanding formed from repeated exposure? But these individual terms don't exist on their own. They function as building blocks that ladder up to entire sentences, content blocks, and paragraphs that get repeated when the user enters a similar context. Text in product is also frequently interconnected, whether branching off from different translations, states, or variations of an A-B test. Text exists in so many different existing systems. The role of text, text in so many existing systems, whether it's design, product, internationalization, or legal, makes it all the more crucial that it's managed in an overarching system. Because most teams currently update copy, copy manually, outdated copy is so often scattered across so many different places, docs, sheets, mockups, and code bases. And lastly, style guides often aren't systems. Although style guides lay down a lot of groundwork in identifying the edges and boundaries, they have little control over how text or design is actually carried out. They rely on the ability of individual contributors to remember and replicate even as the guidelines themselves change. So thinking about how we use text in product pointed us towards two core concepts for systemizing text that informed how we wanted to build Ditto. The first of which is components. This was about codifying repetition, thinking about text as building blocks, and enforcing consistency. The second of which is variance. This was about codifying relationships, being explicit about user context, and thinking about text as a part of an entire user experience. With these two concepts, components and variance in mind, we set off on building something to help teams systemize their text. 
So we had this vision of a tool that could allow you to componentize your product text and create a single source of copy truth that integrated with all the places where your copy needed to go. But we really didn't immediately know where to start. Like Jessica mentioned, we knew copy was touched by a lot of people and that it was being stored and written in a lot of different tools. But beyond that, we didn't have a super clear idea of where copy fit into team's design and product processes. And so Jessica and I decided to go out and talk to people. We spoke to designers, writers, product leaders, anyone who was willing to chat with us about how they managed their copy, but also more broadly, how text fit into design and what they thought the future of design was. And from those conversations, we started realizing that we kept getting pointed back to the same thing, which was Figma. In conversation after conversation, we kept hearing Figma is the future of design, it, that it was enabling this level of cross-functional collaboration that was previously unthinkable. And the more we thought about it, the more it made sense to us that Figma would be kind of the starting point for Ditto. Jessica and I had this core belief that text was an integral part of design, and we also knew that the last thing that teams needed was another standalone piece of software. And so we set off to start building Ditto on Figma. And super luckily, right around that time, Figma actually opened up their platform so that anyone could build on top of Figma for the very first time via something called plugins. Figma had already put out their REST API for a year at that point that allowed us to read information from Figma files. But with this new plugins API, we could actually now write back to the Figma files. And for us, this meant that we could realize our vision of Ditto, this new tool we were building, and Figma, truly talking to each other and being in sync. And what that also meant was that we could build a tool that lived where designers were already working directly in the file. And at the same time, writers could feel like they had a tool and a source of truth for their copy, but one that was never too detached from the designs. So with that how in place, we started building. We joined Figma's Slack channel for the plugins beta, and there we asked a lot of questions and met a lot of really cool creators. And a few weeks and many late nights later, we finished the first version of our plugin and got it approved by Josh at Figma. Shout out to Josh. Um, here's a screenshot of that moment in the form of a Slack message back in January 2020. You might think I was being dramatic by embarrassingly typing that we were jumping up and down in excitement, but Jessica and I were roommates at the time, and we still are, and we're in fact actually doing that in real life in our living room. <laughs> Uh, but in all seriousness, through the process of building this first integration with Figma, we really started to develop a better sense of what our vision for Ditto was. And what we eventually landed on was this, a tool that helps teams collaborate on copy from ideation to design to development. Fast forward about two years, and we've actually been able to realize a lot of that vision of Ditto, which hasn't really changed. So in addition to a Figma plugin, Ditto also now has a web app and developer tools so that we can actually be there at every step of the product development process. At this point, you might be thinking, this sounds great and all, sounds really cool, but how does Ditto actually work? And what does systemizing your text actually look like? That would be a super fair question. So let's get into some examples. I'm going to walk through three ways we see teams currently using Ditto to systemize their text. So if we think back to kind of what Jessica was saying, the first is going to be Ditto components, which is a way to componentize text and build up a reusable content library for your team. The next is Ditto variants, a way to manage things like copy expirations, translations, just any variations on copy for different states. And then the last thing I'm going to show is actually the power of systemizing that text and showing how you can sync changes from design all the way to development using Ditto. So first up is going to be Ditto components. In Ditto, you can build a reusable component library just for text, similar to a design component system or a developer component system. And you can use Ditto text components in different projects, and all those instances will be linked so that if you edit one, all the other instances of that content will get updated everywhere else in your design. We see teams create text components for things like standardized error messages, placeholders, taglines, that sort of thing. So let's actually see how this works um, and, and roll the demo. 
So here I am in a Figma file that has two frames uh, mockups for the web and mobile versions of the first screen in an onboarding flow. I've just opened up Ditto's Figma plugin here, and I'm actually going to create a Ditto text component out of this next CTA. Here I'm naming it onboarding slash CTA slash next. And now that I've created it, it's been added to my team's component library, and I can reuse that anywhere else. So on this other mobile screen here, I'm going to attach that to this CTA here. So I'm searching for that component I just created, onboarding CTA next, and attaching it to this proceed text. Once I attach it, it's going to get updated. And now I have both pieces of text attached to the same Ditto text component. So when I go and edit one from next to maybe continue, it's going to get updated automatically across that mobile screen as well. And so with Ditto components, you can build up a reusable content library for your team. And then what we see teams do is actually integrate their Ditto text library with their Figma design system and actually map those text components back to design components. And that way, design and content is fully integrated, but you're still able to treat text as something that does have its own principles and patterns and building blocks separate from the visuals. This enables, for example, a workflow where designers can immediately pull compliance approved text from their team's Ditto content library into a mockup when working directly in Figma. So next up, we're going to talk through Ditto variants as another way we see teams systemizing their text. These allow teams to write and manage text variations. We see these used by a lot of teams for localization, but they can also be used for things like A-B testing, copy expirations, and just generally any state-based text. So here I'm in the Ditto web app, and I'm showing a project that's connected already to a Figma file. This gray card item in the middle corresponds to a frame in the Figma file and all the text on that frame. And what I've done already is added a Ditto variant called returning user, and that's shown up as its own tab right there. On that variant tab, I've defined some variations on the copy for users that are returning to our tool as opposed to ones that are signing up completely new. So for example, I've made the H1 for this variant welcome back instead of just welcome. And now I can show how those variations can actually get previewed directly in the mockups using Ditto. So let's roll that second demo. You can see here that I'm in the Figma file that corresponds to the project I just showed. And I selected the frame, and I'm now selected from that dropdown, the returning user variant. And I saw it automatically pop up right there. And I can do that for any type of variant that I want. And along with Ditto components, I can then build up this library of standardized content with different standardized versions of that content. And all of those will be directly previewable in Figma so that that content can always stay really close to your designs. That enables something, for example, like being able to preview your translations directly in your mockups. The last thing I'm going to show is actually the power of having that systemized text in the form of components and variants. And I'm going to show how you can use Ditto to sync copy changes in your designs all the way to a website in development. So let's roll that demo. So in this example, I have some Figma mockups for a website called Ditto b, &B no relation to Airbnb. And you can see here that I've already connected it to Ditto and opened up our Figma plugin. And then here, I'm showing a website in development that we've actually built based off of those Figma designs. And that is also already integrated with Ditto via our developer tools. Now in the Figma file, I'm going to scroll up here, and I'm going to edit some text and sync those changes into Ditto. So here I'm going to edit the hero text, and then I'm also going to edit the subheader to maybe something more fun. And then now when I save those edits, you're going to see in the website in development that it still has the original text. It says travel the world, book places to stay. But then I can use our developer integrations and actually just run one command. And you'll see here that our website in development just magically automatically updates with those changes because we've already connected it to Ditto. So what we've done here is taken a piece of text, we've componentized it, and used it across both design and development, effectively treating the text as one entity across those different stages. And if we do ever need to update that text again, we can just go directly to that component edit it, and those changes will get pushed across design and development. And I didn't show this here, but those variants I showed in that second demo also come into play here. 
So you can use those variants to manage things like A-B testing or localization directly in development. So those are three examples of how Ditto works and how we're actually trying to bring our core belief that tech should be treated as a system to life. Like Jessica said, copy is inherently cross-functional. And ultimately, we see Ditto's goal as being that source of copy truth and really text infrastructure across every stage of that product development process. And that brings us to the last part of our talk what building Ditto and working with hundreds of product teams has taught us about what we might see in the next decade of design. So firstly, of course, no surprise, is that text is an integral part of building product and that the words are as much a part of any design as the visuals. From building Ditto, we've seen that the role of copy today is similar to what design started out as, maybe something that's written ad hoc, often brought in at the end to maybe fill in some finalized visuals. And in the next decade, we're going to see content and copy travel the same arc that design has in the past decade, where it's evolved from something that's a nice to have to something that's recognized as critical for every product and really has a seat at the table. And along with that, we've already seen teams starting to recognize the value of text and actually invest in it. You can see in this graphic that the term UX writing has actually exploded over the years, and that's only going to continue to grow. And along with that, we're going to see the definition of what it means to be a designer continue to expand. Anyone who thinks about the user experience of the product, whether it's the visuals or the research that goes into it or the words, will be considered a designer. And then last but not least, we're going to see a change in how we view the process of design and where it fits into product development. Right now, we have conversations about how to optimize handoff between kind of different parts of the product development process handoff from writers to designers, from designers to devs. But these conversations very much treat these stages as separate, each with its own separate set of tooling and ways of working. For example, once something is finalized in the design and gets handed off to developers, it's often just kind of out of the designer's hands. In the next decade, we're going to see that these conversations change and this mindset shift to treating these stages of ideation to design to development as part of the same larger process of product building rather than separate ones. And we'll see tools and workflows evolve to support this, with roles across teams increasingly using the same shared language, and handoffs evolving more and more from kind of a finalized one-way thing to something that's much more fluid and reflects how iterative product building is much better. This shift, of course, has already started happening with the concept of design systems and you know, even more specifically, things like design tokens. But what's interesting is that these conversations nowadays often don't kind of include text at all despite the fact that, as we said over and over, copy is so inherently cross-functional. And in that sense, it kind of makes it extra well-suited to being systemized. Unlike something like visual design, copy is already being touched by all these different roles, designers, engineers, legal teams. And so it's in some sense easier to get everyone kind of sharing that same language. That's why we see text playing an increasingly large and critical role in this next decade as we start thinking about these stages as part of one larger process of building product as opposed to separate kind of siloed ones. So that's the end of the talk. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, we'd love to hear what you think. So if you have any thoughts on what we said here today, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We have kind of our social media handles up on the screen. Um, really appreciate it. Thank you.